sanctions. Instead, the country is stressing on its close relations with Moscow and Kiev. Now, after wrapping up, Mayor Bennett uh, headed to Chancellor Olaf Scholz. And then we have French President Emmanuel Macron's office that said that Macron spoke to Bennett before he left for Moscow. the safety of its citizens stuck in Ukraine by speeding up the evacuations from the different conflict zones in the country. A total of 13 flights are scheduled to land today, which is expected to carry around 2,500 Indian nationals. In the early hours, a flight from Romania with more than 180 citizens landed in India's financial capital, Mumbai, with a special flight from Slovakia that touched down in Delhi, carrying around 150 students. The Indian government said that nearly 15 flights have landed in the last 24 hours with around 2,900 people on board. The government claims that more than 13,000 people have been evacuated so far. The Ukrainian region of Sumy is now the main focus. The Indian embassy issued a statement which said no stone will be left unturned to ensure the safety of Indian nationals in the region. The embassy added that all stranded Indian citizens have been evacuated in the city of Pesachin, but concern, a constant shelling and lack of transportation is a cause of concern here. The main focus is now on Sumi. This is a little in the northeast on the border with Russia. Now here, of course, this has been in the news a lot and we are exploring uh, multiple options for evacuating our citizens, uh, students out of there. Uh, but let me reiterate, the main challenge remains the ongoing shelling there, ongoing violence there, and the lack of transportation, primarily. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi held a high-level meeting on the situation in Ukraine to review the progress in India's evacuation mission Operation Ganga. Foreign Minister Jay Shankar along with Cabinet Minister Piyush Goyal attended that meet. Ukrainian Foreign Minister Dmitry Kuleba has now urged Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi to reach out to Russian President Vladimir Putin and urge him to stop the ongoing invasion. Kuleba pointed to the special relation between India and Russia. In response to Vion's question, Kuleba said that all countries that enjoy special relations with India can appeal to Putin. who enjoy uh, they can appeal to President Putin, Prime Minister Modi. We uh, call on him to continue uh, reaching out to President Putin and explaining to him that this war is against interests of all. The only person on the entire planet who is interested in this war is President Putin himself. The people of Russia are not interested in this war either. Indian Prime Minister and Russian President have spoken to each other twice since Russia began invasion of Ukraine. The first conversation was held on the 24th of February. Prime Minister Modi urged Russia to end violence and return to the path of diplomacy and negotiations. Safety of Indian nationals stuck in Ukraine remained a focal point of discussion here. Prime Minister Modi also emphasized on the importance of honest and sincere dialogue. Kuleba pointed out that the invasion is impacting global agricultural market, including exports to India. Now, India imports huge quantity of sunflower oil from the Eastern European country. For India, the biggest worry remains more than 500 Indian students who remain stranded in Sumi. Kuleba said that Ukraine has arranged some trains to ensure departure of the foreign students. India has launched Operation Ganga to evacuate its nationals crossed over to countries like Poland, Slovakia, Hungary, Romania, Moldova. So far, over 20,000 Indians have left Ukraine. 63 flights have brought more than 13,000 Indians back to their homeland. Meanwhile, Kuleba dismissed Russia's claims of Indians being held hostage in Ukraine. He of Mariupol on Saturday, despite agreeing to a temporary ceasefire just hours earlier. Both sides blame each other for violating the ceasefire agreement that was brought in to help evacuate the citizens stuck in the conflict zones. Mariupol officials in a statement said that they had to postpone the rescue operations as Russian troops continued their offensive despite agreeing to a temporary pause in their military action. According to local officials, the entire city has been surrounded by Russian forces, which made it rather difficult for them to provide safety to the residents. 
In a televised address, Ukrainian presidential advisor Oleski Aristovich said that Russia did not observe the ceasefire in some areas and thus prevented the implementation of the joint plan that was previously agreed upon by both sides. Russian Defense Ministry, meanwhile, has confirmed that the humanitarian ceasefire, which was, impo which was imposed in the two cities, that is Mariupol and Volonovaka, has ended. They also traded blame on what they described as Ukrainian nationalists for the failure of the humanitarian ceasefire. 